Okay, so today's video, we're going to be talking about the difference between opening a new window as a tab or as a pop-up window. So how you can do this in JavaScript and how you can completely control that other tab or the window once it's opened. All right, right now, all I'm doing is I click on these and I'm displaying console. So I've got a function that's attached to each button. When I click the button, it runs the function and I'm displaying a message. So let's jump into the code. Pretty basic HTML. We've got the header. The two buttons, they've got different IDs. That's how I'm going to target them. I'm using my defer attribute. So that's going to wait until after the page has loaded and read the HTML before it tries to run this script. And here's the script. So running it with defer, I'm waiting until these things are loaded. And then I'm adding the click listener to each of them, two different functions. All right. Now the method is actually almost the same for doing both things. And we're going to put inside of here that I want to do window.open. And it's going to work the same in both. Window.open is the command that lets you open up either a new tab or a new window. Now we can specify in here that I want to open up something completely blank. I just want that window open. Or I can put in a page name. So I've got a couple of pages that I built here. One that's a tab one that's a pop-up window. You can see that the code is the same for the two of them. It's just a different title and a different h1 value. So in here, I'm going to open up tab.html. I'm not putting a, a path or anything in front of this, so it's going to use the path for this index.html file. That's the place that it's going to load from. So I'm loading that. The second attribute inside of here, um, this is one that was uh, originally designed to work uh, to let you set a title on it. And it's no longer used anywhere except for, I believe, Firefox. So you can just skip over this first one. You can put an empty string or you can put null. And then the third is options. Are there any options or features that you want to turn on or off? Um, for opening up a tab, there's nothing that we really need to specify. We'll get into some of these when we talk about the window. So we can just leave it as this. Or if you want to put null here, you can do that or an empty string. That will work as well. This is all that's required to open up a tab. You call window.open. It's going to open this file as a brand new tab. And so I'll save it and run that just as is. And there we go. It opened up a new tab in the browser. This is the page tab.html. It's the one that I said to load. Simple enough. Okay. Now, if I want to do something to this page, we actually get back a reference to that window. So you can call the variable anything you want. I'll call it win. This is the window object for this thing right here, this new tab that we opened. So if I wanted to do something like changes background color as soon as it's as soon as it's ready, we can do this win.onload equals, and I can create a function inside of here. So here's going to be my load event. Now I'm not using add event listener. Add event listener doesn't work with this load event for the new tabs. So we have to use these properties like this. So the window object has an on load property. And inside of here, once it is loaded, Win is that window object. So we can say win.document.body.style.backgroundcolor. Um, Let's just do that. Let's change it to a lighter gray. There, so sort of a medium gray. And it's using the same CSS. So it's got this dark, dark, dark gray. But now I've got the medium gray. That's all we had to do was just this, wait for the load event so that it is actually loaded. And then we have access to everything that's inside of that page. If you want to close it, we can do that as well. We can say window.close. Now that's going to do it as soon as it opens. We don't want to qu quite do that. We, do, we want to be able to see that it's there. So let's just do a set timeout. So my function that I'm going to run inside of here is just going to say win.close. That will close the window and let's do it after two and a half seconds. There we go. So 
Open the tab, it's got the different background color, and then after two and a half seconds, it closes. Simple as that. So this variable that we get back gives us complete control over that. Because we opened this window with our script, we have complete control over it. Now there is one, one gotcha with that. It is um, the same origin domain policy is going to apply to this. So if you're opening a web page from another website, you're not going to have control over things there. There's a lot of things that are sort of security sandboxed according to the domain. We have to be on the same origin for this to for us to be able to control the script like this. We can close it, not a problem, but we can't actually go in there and do a lot of stuff with our scripts if it's from a different origin. Okay, for the window, like I was saying, it's the same sort of command. We will also get a reference here. So let's do that. Window.open and we can specify that we want to open that other one when win.html there's no title and the difference is inside of here what are the properties that we want to put and one of them is called pop-up this is just going to be a comma separated list of different properties if I say pop-up as the value for this then boom there it is we have opened a pop-up window now this has taken the entire screen because that's how big this window was. If I want to control the size of it and the positioning, that also goes inside of here. So pop up and we can say, I want the width of this to be 400 pixels. I want the height of it to be 400 pixels. And then for the positioning, two properties, left and top. From the left edge of the screen, I want it to be 300 pixels over. And from the top, let's say, 500 pixels away from the top. There we are. And there we have it. So same idea as the tab. It's just we've added that additional pop-up property. There we go. So this in this list of features, I believe it's called a feature list. In this list, we just have to include pop-up as one of those things. And then instead of opening it as a tab, it will open it as a pop-up window. Okay, now one other thing to mention in here, we don't have to actually have a page to open. Like I'm opening two files that I built. If I put inside of here that I want, I'll use the same list here, that I want to open up blank. I can actually op do that. I can open up an empty page. So there we go. There's no page right here, but there is still a window object, but this is empty. So we can, and this is sort of the only time and place that you would ever use the document.write method. So I'm going to wait for the load event, same as I did here. And inside my function, I now have access to everything. So there's the window object. Here's the document inside there. There is a write method. Now this is not a method that you would see very often. There's write and write line. Write line just puts a carriage return after what it writes. So it's like you're writing the source of the HTML file. Inside of here, I can say, hey, I'm going to write out an HTML file. So here's my head, my title, that's the end of the head, I could put the link to the CSS if I wanted, there's the body, I'll just write the word sample inside there, close the body and then close the HTML element. So once this window is open, I'm going to write the contents of the page. So I click on this. Oh, actually, we don't want to put this inside of load. <laughs> and this is why we don't use the document.write method. The document.write method only works up until the point where it has finished loading the document. After that, this doesn't work. So an error on my part actually illustrates why we don't use document write to add HTML content to a page. So there we go. This is going to write the content. 
And then after the page loads, we can do whatever we want. We can set the CSS, we can ch change things. Here, let's, let's do an interval. I'll do a set interval and I'll resize the page. So here we go, doing something incredibly annoying just to tick off our users. So once every second, I'm going to resize this window. We'll create a, a width value. I'll take whatever screen size is available to me. So not win, but window. So this is the size of my screen that's available to me. Not, I don't want to look at the window. and this will be the height. I don't want to look at the window that I've opened and see how big it is and get its, say, outer, outer width or client width, things like that. I'm going to go to the parent and say, okay, your screen, how much space is available to you? And then we will call. This is on the win. This is the window that we've opened. We're going to call the resize to method and just give it these two values. So once per second after the window's open, we're going to do this. And then let's say after six seconds, we'll close it. So I'll do a set timeout and win.close, just showing that we do have the control over this. So when we open it, first thing we're going to do is we're going to write this HTML content to that document. When that is done, when the load event fires, we're going to set up an interval that once per second, it's going to resize that pop-up window. And it's going to do that repeatedly until the six second mark where it's going to close the window. And we should kill that initial interval. So let's do that. So we'll say um, clear interval never want to leave tasks that are running in the background that have lost their references. I mean, the browser is well enough built now that it's going to get rid of this because it's no longer being used, but it's a good idea to always keep these things in mind. You don't want to accidentally have a memory leak where you're creating functions and running them in the background when the object that they were originally attached to no longer exists. So good practice. Get rid of this interval. Actually, there's one thing worth noting here, and that is the first time we did this with the pop-up window, we were opening an actual file. So we were loading something here because we're using document.write, we're not opening a file. So there is not going to be a load event. There's no win on load to happen. This will actually never happen because we're not opening a file. The write happens and that's fine, but we do not need this when we're building the file ourselves. So if we're building a file from scratch, we don't need that win load. The on load you can use here when you're doing window open of an actual file, but not when it's blank. All right, so here we have it, open a pop-up. There it is, you've got the title, the sample, and the sample text. That's the one that we built with document.write. And then after the six seconds, it's closing itself. All right, now, Back inside of here, one other thing worth mentioning is this. I threw this uh, in here a moment ago. No opener. This is another property that prevents the window that's opened from being able to run script that affects the window that actually opened it. So if when is the window being opened, the pop-up that is opened, by default, if you don't have this no opener option in here, if this is not in the feature list, then win is able to impact our page. It can pass run script commands on us as well. The window object, which would be win, has a property called opener, which refers to whoever opened it. If you do this, what you're saying is cut the connection. Let the connection be only one way. The window that's doing the opening of the pop-up is allowed to affect the pop-up, but it's not vice versa. The pop-up is not allowed to impact the opening window. All right. So just an aside for that, that's 
all there is to it. If you want to open a pop-up or you want to open a tab, it's the same command. It's really just whether or not you're putting this pop-up command inside of there. All right. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.